okay guys welcome to this uh, second part of uh, our lecture uh, in the first part as you remember uh, in the previous video we discuss about the types of retaining wall the different requirements uh, the calculation of pressure different formulas the uh, f different failures right so uh, in this video we will uh, solve an example uh, this is not a design example the design example will be in the next video in this example it says that the trial section this is the trial section as you can see right uh, let me get a um, highlighter or a pen okay so the trial section this is your trial section right it is given to you and you have uh, nothing to do with the sections this trial section is given to you it is required to check the safety of all the wall against overturning sliding and bearing pressure under the footing so you have to check whether it fails in the overturning manner or not whether it is uh, uh, failing in the sliding manner or whether uh, the slide beneath the wall uh, uh, fails or not so you have to check for these three types of failures okay uh, the given data is weight of backfill is 110 pounds per cubic feet the angle of internal friction is 35 degree coefficient of friction between concrete and soil is 0.5 and allowable pressure is 2.5 kip per square foot and the concrete properties are uh, the compressive strength is 3 ksi you have to understand the uh, geometry of the wall the height of the wall is uh, 10 feet uh, uh, which is the, uh, the height of this vertical element the thickness of this pad or the base is 1 feet and uh, the total length of uh, this pad or this base is 5 feet and 3 inches right and uh, the the portion of the base beyond the wall is 9 inches and uh, the, the width or the length of the, this portion is uh, 3 feet 6 inches and the uh, length of the remaining part is 12 inches okay so the total is 5 feet and 3 inches uh, the wall uh, the outer uh, side uh, or outer edge of the wall is straight and the inner edge is inclined and uh, uh, what uh, it has to do with uh, with our calculation uh, you will see in the next uh, step the width of the wall at the top is 1 feet right and uh, you already know the width of the wall at the bottom is 3 feet and 6 inches right now let's start with the solution uh, using the Rankine equation for the active earth pressure the coefficient of active earth pressure CA is equal to this this is a formula you just have to put the values of phi which is given to you here see the 35 degree and you get the value of CA is 0.271 the passive pressure on the toe is that for a height of 1 feet as you can see here the uh, uh, thickness uh, of the soil at the passive side is 1 feet which is small and can be neglected okay so uh, in this case we are ignoring the passive earth pressure and we are only calculating the active earth pressure HA is equal to this coefficient CA into W which is given to you right uh, this is 110 PCF and uh, the uh, h into h by 2 right so h square by 2 so height of the wall is uh, 11 feet why it is 11 feet because the height of this vertical element is 10 feet and the height of this uh, uh, th or the thickness of this base is 1 feet so 10 plus 1 is 11 because you are calculating from this point right so from this point till this point it is 11 feet now uh, as you can see that the HA when you put the values in this uh, equation you get the value of HA to be uh, 1804 pounds or 1.8 kips right and HA acts at a distance H by 3 and H is uh, uh, 11 so 11 by 3 is 3.67 feet right so this is the H uh, or the height where the resultant uh, HA is acting from the bottom of the base so uh, we got HA and we can get the overturning moment which is equal to uh, this HA which is 1.804 kips 
into this height uh, which is 3.67 so it turns out to be 6.62 kip feet now uh, calculating the balancing moment or the restoring moment and uh, for that we have to calculate the weight uh, now you can see that there are five different types of weight w1 2 3 4 5 let's see uh, what uh, these types of weights are so as you can see that this vertical uh, element uh, it is a, a kind of trapezoid right so we have divided it into this rectangular portion and this triangular portion so uh, w1 is the rectangular one right uh, uh, till up to this dashed line and w2 is a triangular one uh, w3 is the weight of this uh, base or the footing of this uh, wall uh, as you can see w4 is the weight of the soil that is uh, uh, acting uh, on this uh, uh, inclined portion of the wall and w5 is the weight of the wall uh, uh, on the remaining this uh, one feet of this strip of this space right so these are uh, different weights for w1 2 and 3 uh, we will use a unit weight of concrete and for w4 and w5 we will use the unit weight of uh, soil right so as you can see that w1 2 3 the unit weights are 145 see however for w4 and w5 we are using the unit weights of soil right similarly uh, w1 was a rectangle so it is a uh, 1 into the total height w2 was a triangle so half into base into perpendicular so perpendicular is again 10 feet c for w1 and w2 the perpendicular or the height remains the same however for the rectangular one the width is 1 so it is 1 into 10 but in this case since the total base width was uh, 3 and a half feet and when we deduct this 1 feet so the remaining uh, base is 2 and a half feet and when you multiply this 2 and a half feet uh, with this uh, 10 feet and divide it by 2 so you get the area of this triangle all right uh, similarly w3 is also a rectangle since this base pad it is a rectangle so 5.25 uh, multiply by 1 right uh, w4 is also a triangle just inverted triangle like w2 and w5 is a rectangle so uh, these are the total weights that are acting on this uh, uh, wall uh, 1.45 kip 1.8 7 uh, 1.375 1.375 1.1 and when you add them all you will get this resultant you, you can see that a uh, summation of w is equal to r and these are equal to 6.5 kip right now uh, when you multiply them with uh, respective arms how you uh, determine the uh, lever arm uh, for example uh, w1 you can see that it is acting at the middle of this one feet right this uh, the total width is one feet so it will be acting right at the middle so the middle will be at 0 0.5 feet and you add this portion which is equal to 9 inches so 9 inches plus 6 inches uh, is uh, the total is uh, 15 inches which is 1.25 see the arm is 1.25 similarly for w2 uh, these 9 inches plus this 12 inches uh, gives you 21 inches plus one third of this uh, 2.5 uh, feet so that turns out to be 2.6 feet right similarly you can calculate uh, the remaining uh, uh, parts or the remain uh, arm for the remaining uh, loads and when you multiply them for example 1.45 into 1.25 the total moment is 1.81 and when you uh, add all the moments the uh, sum of all the restoring moments is 18.44 kip feet we know the uh, value of uh, overturning moment now we divide the restoring moment by overturning moment and it the the factor of safety is 2.78 which is quite larger than 2 so our wall is safe against the overturning now the force resisting sliding now we have to determine the factor of safety against the sliding so as we know that f is equal to mu times r we already determined r right and uh, the mu is given uh, here the mu is given right so we just have to multiply this mu with the r uh, and it turns out to be 3.25 kip so this is the force that is causes uh, causing the uh, uh, 
that is resisting the sliding okay so factor of safety against sliding is f divided by ha because ha is causing the sliding so 3.25 divided by 1.8 uh, it is equal to 1.8 which is quite uh, larger than 1.5 so this wall is uh, safe against slide overturning as well as sliding right now we are done with the uh, two uh, requirements and uh, we are just left with the final one that is the soil pressure right so now we have to determine the soil pressure under the base and for that uh, we have to determine the distance of the resultant from toe and o uh, which is equal to uh, x is equal to mb minus m0 divided by r so mb is the restoring moment m0 is the overturning moment and r is the resultant force we know all the values we just have to put it in it and we get the value of x is equal to 1.8 feet it means that the resultant which is summation of all the w's it is acting at 1.8 feet uh, from this uh, phase uh, or this point which we have uh, termed as O. Now the eccentricity is E is equal to 2.62 minus 1.82. What is this 2.62? If you can see that the total width of the wall is 5 feet and 3 inches. Uh, and when you divide it, divide by, uh, by 2. So the uh, distance up to the center point, this, is, this comes out to be 2. Point 62 so you uh, when you deduct this 2.1.8 uh, from this 2.62 the remaining portion which is this one it is equal to 0 0.8 feet which means that this resultant is acting at 0 0.8 feet from uh, very center of the wall okay uh, or the base the resultant r acts just inside the middle third of the base and has an eccentricity of 0.8 feet from the center of the base right for a 1 feet length of the footing, the effective width of footing is 5.25. So the moment of inertia is the applying the uh, formula for moment of inertia which is equal to uh, the, the length is 1 feet and the width is 5.25. So uh, bh cube divided by 12 which gives you the value of 12.1 feet uh, power 4 and uh, area is 5.25 into 1 so 5.25 uh, square feet the soil pressure at the two extreme ends of the footing are q1 q2 is equal to for q1 you have to add them and for q2 you have to subtract this one from this one we already know r we already know m and we uh, just determined a and i and uh, c is just uh, half of the distance so the moment m is re is equal to 6.5 into 0 0.8 this r or uh, summation of w multiply by this eccentricity so this is our m in this case and when we put the values in this equation you can see that 6.5 is a resultant uh, of uh, a resultant uh, uh, force 5.25 is the area we just determined here uh, 5.2 uh, is the moment uh, uh, what is uh, c c is 2.62 which is half of the length of the base and uh, i which is moment of inertia and equals to 12.1 so when we solve them uh, the total uh, value of q1 is 2.36 ksf and for q2 we have to deduct 1.12 from 1.24 and the total value is 0 0.12 ksf now checking the bending stress in concrete at point a of the toe so this is point a as you can see that this dashed line right so soil pressure at a at this point what will be the soil pressure if it is uh, 2.36 here and 0 0.12 here so we can very easily solve it uh, with different methods uh, uh, we can solve it by similar triangles the q at a is equal to 0 0.12 right plus why is it 0 0.12 because we have deducted uh, it as a rectangle so we have uh, divided this uh, quadrilateral into a rectangle and a triangle now uh, 0 0.12 is already added in it and now we have to solve for this triangle which is equal to uh, 4.5 divided by 5.25 4.5 is the length of uh, uh, point a and 5.25 is the total length so uh, uh, into 2.36 which is uh, this one minus uh, the uh, uh, the 
for value or the perpendicular that we already considered 0 0.12 so it gives us the value of uh, stress at point a which is equal to 2.04 ksf please remember uh, we have solved it by similar triangles okay there is nothing to worry about now let m a b is calculated at a due to rectangular stress and a triangular stress now as i told you that the rectangular stress is this one and the triangular stress is this one so m a is equal to 2.04 which is a q value of q a into 0 0.75 uh, which is the length of uh, uh, this point uh, this uh, 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 you can call it length or you can call it the distance of a from o right uh, into 0 0.75 divided by 2 plus 0 0.32 into 0 0.75 into 0 0.5 uh, this is the area of the triangle into 0 0.75 uh, uh, two third because the resultant will be at a here right so this distance is two third of this 0 0.75 so the total is uh, uh, sorry the moment at a is 0 0.63 kip fit now we have got QA and we have got MA the fluctual stress in concrete is MY by I or MC by I uh, M is 0 0.63 just like we uh, determined here and uh, C is uh, uh, 6 uh, why we have multiplied it with the 12,000 because if you check the units it's in kip fit so to convert from uh, fit into inches you have to multiply it by 12 and to convert it from kip to pounds you have to multiply it by 1000 so we have multiplied it uh, in, uh, into 1000 so you get into PSI and dividing it by the moment of inertia so uh, here the C is equal to H by 2 as I already explained and I is equal to BH cube divided by 12 which is 1728 inch power 4 so the modulus of rupture of concrete is uh, we can determine uh, easily by uh, this formula 7.5 into lambda under root FC prime and if you put lambda is equal to 1 for the normal width concrete and FC prime which is given to you as a 3000 psi so it comes out to be uh, 410 psi which is mm, way way larger than the uh, fluctual stresses in concrete so the factor of safety against cracking is 16 times right therefore the section is adequate and no other sections need to be checked so there uh, that was all from uh, this uh, example in the next video we will discuss uh, in detail uh, about uh, designing a cantilever retaining wall so stay tuned and uh, give your feedback thank you very much